Welcome to tonight's um, marriage school. It's a session that the Lord started with us some weeks ago, teaching us about marriage. We, we knew something about marriage, you know, because most of us, many of us, may, perhaps even all of us have been working with God for some time, one way or the other. And, you know, he teaches you as you work with him. However, we saw him adding on to what we knew. We saw him growing our understanding, deepening our understanding of what marriage is and helping us actually answering um, a variety of questions as he taught us. So these, this, this journey over the last several weeks have been a rich blessing, I believe, to many. If you missed some of those sessions one way or the other, thank God for recordings. The recordings are there. And um, I believe I have shared a couple of times the links to the folder that the folders that have the various recordings. I will, I will share that again, um, God willing. And I encourage you, even for sessions that you were, you were part of live, I encourage you to listen and listen again, because I do notice that as we listen, more of the truth sinks into our spirits. And as we listen, the Lord points out various things. Maybe at the first listen, he, he showed you one, two, and three. At the next lesson, he may point out number four, which are all elements that he wants you to have or he may want me to have. So I warmly welcome you this evening to what the Lord has in store for us uh, in the marriage school. We bless the name of the Lord for the privilege of being gathered uh, in his name, being gathered to learn from him what he will have us learn. So at this moment, um, in fact, no, talking about this evening and what he will have us learn, this evening we have a time or we'll be sharing testimonies and also responding to questions that sisters may be prompted to ask. And I know that the Lord will minister through those testimonies and minister through the questions and the sharing that results from the testimonies and from the questions. So please be, uh, be, be alert, be awake to what the Lord will have you share. Be our, uh, let's be awake to the, the, the questions he would have you ask, because many times those have all been a blessing to all of us. As always, whenever we share and whenever we discuss, we are looking at how to apply the truth of God's word to our own lives, the truth of God's word to our own lives. That's very, very, very critical because one can answer all sorts of questions or have all sorts of wonderful discussions about what Christendom should do, what wives in general should do, what, you know, People, people's experiences and so on and so forth. But honestly, you are not living people's life. Neither am I living people's lives. I'm living my life. You are living your life. I am walking in my marriage and you are walking in your marriage. The more specific we are, 
And the more focused we can be on the marriage God has put me into, the marriage God has put you into, the more helped I become, the more the Lord helps me because my attention is on my exam paper. It's not the time. The time is short. The days are short. It's not the time to be overseeing and supervising and commenting on other people's scripts. Let God be God and take care of all his children. He is capable. Let me be a child and sit with my father and say, Father, I want to learn of you. Can you help me in my marriage, in my walk, in my thinking, in my behavior? Help me with understanding that I need for my walk. And that is a place of blessing. We are not even asking anything on behalf of a husband. Why a husband will not do, will do whatever. They are not here. We are not coming to advise any husband here. They are not here. Neither are we going to be sending words of advice and words of wisdom to any husband that they said when we can, we should come and tell you nothing like that. God has our time. God is here for me, for you. You are the agenda item. I am the agenda item. And we will not be distracted to look into spaces we are not called to look into. So with all of this in mind, what a joy, what a joy, what a privilege to honor the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who alone is worthy, who has loved us, who has helped us, who has called us his own, who has given us his word as the standard, the standard for our lives. The confidence we have is because of the word of God and what he has said to us, and we honor him. I would like you to join me in thanking our Heavenly Father, thanking our God and our King for these opportunities, for His care, for His thoughtfulness, for His mercy, for His grace, for everything that you can imagine to thank Him for. Just thank Him, sis. Just thank Him yourself. Thank Him. Father, I thank you. Blessed is your name, great is your faithfulness. God, you are good. Thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you for your meekness, Lord. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for conforming us to the image of Christ and teaching us your ways. Thank you for paying the price and qualifying us and giving us the authority and the power that is needed to walk as children of light and as children of God himself. Father, thank you so much because there's nobody like you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is your name. Father, thank you. I bless this session in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless it to be a session that the Spirit of God uses as he wills. To glorify Jesus in every possible way. Oh Lord, thank you. As for the works of darkness, I bar them from our midst in Jesus' name. And I Bind every spirit of darkness associated or, or, or assigned to work against what God is doing in our midst. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I declare that the Lord has free and full and complete access to his daughters and that each of us will receive from the Lord what he has intended for us. We are blessed, very blessed and highly favored. 
And Father, we thank you for doing this. Thank you for making us who you've made us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Dear sisters, so, uh, <laughs> you know the song that says, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing the praises of my Lord and King. The, the idea is that if I had a thousand tongues distributed all over my body, and each tongue were talking about the greatness of God and the things he has done, I still yet, I could never complete the account of God's goodness. Even with that team of a thousand tongues, each speaking a different thing about God, yet we could never complete our testimony. And so this evening, I welcome you to tell of his goodness, to speak of the things that he has taught you in the marriage school. How have you changed? What have you learned? What has God shown you? And I know that with everyone that honors God in this way, extols God's name in this way, uh, testifies of God in this way, another will be encouraged, another will be helped, another will see God, another will hear of things that God does. So if you are available to, if you are willing to, you just raise your hand. And by all means, the floor is open to share your a testimony of what God has done for you through the marriage school. Or if you have a question about any of the things that we, the Lord has been teaching us in the marriage school so far, you are welcome to ask. So the floor is open. Oh, oh, a thousand times to sing, my dear Trudy, must pray the glories of my God and King in the triumphs of his grace is the triumphs of his grace. Okay. Is there anyone willing? Anyone at all willing to share? Sister Rita, thank you. Please go ahead. Good evening to us all and thank you for the opportunity. So for me, it's not a any long testimony, it's just to thank God and to also thank all the sisters on this platform for sharing their various stories. Um, for me, we are beginners, you know, so it is always humbling and a privilege to, to hear those who have gone ahead, you know, pointing us to some roadmaps because um, I joined this platform not long ago, but I've seen some 
changes in, in my life, you know, I can't really say maybe I was um, towing this particular path and I diverted here or there, but then um, in the daily living at home, when I see certain tendencies rising in me, you know, the Cinderella expectations and all that, and mm -hmm. I, I feel like exhibiting, you know, my mind will be quickly go back to some of the sessions we've had, some of the stories, the journey, some of the sisters I've shared, you know, I wanted my husband to do this and then it didn't end well, even some using the word of God and how it ended. So it always puts me on check. And because of that, by God's grace, I've been able to avoid some chaos I believe I would have created. So I just want to thank God for the opportunity to be part of this family. And also thank you to all the sisters for sharing their journeys. They are not ashamed. It doesn't matter how terrible it may sound. They are able to share freely and to testify. And it serves as a guide personally to me. And um, I'm grateful for that. Thank you and God bless us all. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rita. God bless you. God bless you. We give God glory. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for setting the ball rolling. God is good. It encourages us. Thank you so much. Sisters, okay, so the floor is open. What has the Lord done for you, if anything, through the marriage school? How have you been changed, if you have been changed in any way? Or do you have a question or some questions? You can just put up a hand or you can simply unmute in case you can't, uh, yeah, if, if that's easier. Hello, Sister Efe. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. This is Pai. I just want to share a bit of something on the platform. Um, I'll tell the line of um, Rita, the lady that just that just just came in. Um, I also joined the platform not too long ago. I joined in February. And honestly, I think when I joined the platform, I had um, lost my focus or I had lost the focus of what the marriage was supposed to be. It was mostly about what I wanted, what I wanted, what I wanted. At a point, I had idolized what I wanted more than the purpose for which I had um, or, or for the purpose for which I was married, like the the reason why I am in the institution. Mm -hmm. So um, with with your with with the, the teachings and what we learned on the platform, it it put me back on track, I would say, and I'm sure that a lot of um, even Rita said as well, sometimes when you want to go into your Cinderella tendencies. <laughs> you you remember some of the teachings that have been taught, and one of the ones that I really want to um, reiterate on is the um, conforming as supposed to transform. Uh, or the 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 the, the verse that talks about don't be conformed, but don't conform, but be transformed. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us honestly enter marriages. Um, listening to more of the world. And I, I think many of us don't really visit the Bible after we've been given the Bible on our engagement day, like, um, like we've been doing with the marriage school. So I will say that the marriage school really, really encourages or has encouraged me to look into the Bible, to go back into the Bible for the purpose of which um, I, I, I got into the institution as opposed to what I would gain from it or what I expect from it. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's been a very helpful platform. And I also like to say thank you to you and all the, all the 
sisters who come on to share and give advice. Thank you so much. Thank you, sis. God bless you. That's a blessing. God is good. 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 So, dear sisters, the floor remains open for sharing testimonies or any questions that any of us may have. And I also warmly welcome anyone who might be joining us for the first time in the marriage school. It is a joy to listen to the Lord together and to grow together. So you are very, very welcome. And I trust that you will feel at home and that you will also um, catch up if possible on with the various recordings once we well, once we share the link again, which we will do on the Closer Walk platforms. Now, whilst I wait, because I am not seeing any other hand at the moment, I'll just um, share with us on, <laughs> on um, this, the angle that, uh, the Lord sometimes or many times brings to our attention about uh, focusing on our assignments, focusing on our exam sheet. Um, you know, the Lord drew and has been drawing our attention to the fact that when you read your Bible, the Lord takes his time to speak to people in every specific category that he wants to speak to. So, for example, he addresses himself specifically to, let's say, masters bosses, leaders, he speaks to them. He speaks to bond servants. So you will see some scriptures that will say bond servants, that is subordinates, employees, staff, do this and that and that, conduct yourself this way. Then he also speaks to the wicked, and he says, let the wicked man forsake his ways, the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord. That's just an example. But you see, God addresses himself to various categories. He addresses himself to husbands. Says, husbands, love your wife. Now, he also addresses himself to wives and says, wives, do this. Wives, do that. I would like us to read 2 Corinthians 5.10, please. 2 Corinthians 5.10. And now, uh, if I may crave your indulgence, that anyone who is willing, please just unmute and read that out for us. That will be a blessing. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 10. And then also Romans 14, verse 12. Okay, so thank you. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse ten. Thank you. I'm using the ISB version. Hmm. For all of us must appear before the judgment. Second Corinthians chapter five. Ten. 
Okay, I think we had a bit of a mix up there. Sorry about that, sisters. Sister Nanaba, please, were you reading? I think you can continue. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. Yes, please. Okay. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of the Messiah, so that each of us may receive what he deserves for what he has done and his body, whether good or worthless. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sis. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If we can read fourteen twelve. Romans, Romans chapter fourteen, verse twelve. Twelve. Yes. yes. Each of us will give a personal account to God. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sisters. Each of us will give a personal account to God. Each of us will, not me, will give a personal account, not a general account, personal account to God. He said, each of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, of God, to receive our reward for the things we did whilst on earth in this body, whether they were good or they were bad. Now, when you see whether they were good or they were bad, don't be deceived. The good is not what you think is good. And the bad is not what you think is good or what I think is bad and what I think is bad is good. No. Huh. Good or bad is according to the standard of the judge. You see, when you appear in a court, when you appear before an authority, it is their standards, their approved standards that you, you must answer to. You cannot bring your own standards that, oh, in my view, this and that. Your view is totally useless in front of that authority. The only views and the only standards that are admitted in any proper high authority session are the standards and the views that have been adopted or, you know, approved or, you know, um, that are used in that particular setting. That's all. It's not your opinion. It's not my opinion. So what this means is that each of us will appear, will for sure, definitely will appear before God. And we will give an account of what we have done and receive our reward for the things we've done that are good according to the script, according to the constitution of, of heaven, according to the laws of God and what is bad according to the laws of God. Obviously, you and I play various, a variety of roles. You are a, a daughter, you are a mother, you are a friend, you are this, you are that, you are that, you are that, you are that, all in one. Now, because this is marriage school, okay, we might, let's just maybe focus on your, your, your marriage role. When I appear before our Heavenly Father, at that time, sitting in authority as the judge also, and when you also appear, do you realize that part of what I have to account for is the scriptures that he addresses to wives? So the places where he says, wives, do this and that and that. When I'm given, given an account of how I conducted myself as a wife, those standards, those scriptures, those laws of God, they are what I will answer to. 
And he said, each of us will give a personal account, which means I am not going to be able to go and stand there when they call me or when I appear before God, then I am talking about you or I'm talking about somebody's home or I'm talking, no, no, no. I can't even uh, go there and go and discuss my husband's performance. Yeah, it's neither here nor there. I'm, I'm there to account for how I walked in what the word of God has said to me when he said, wife, do this and that. The same way I'll account for the various other parts of my life. I hope you get me. If you become aware of this, you begin to understand why it's important that you focus on your own exam paper. Many of us have, in, maybe in times past or once upon a time, been very, very passionate about what, let's say, our husband should be doing, what he should do, what he's not doing, what he's doing, and all of those things. Very passionate. That's our focus. In fact, for some, when we go to church and they are preaching, yeah, you hear the preaching, but you are more interested in what he must be hearing to. It's like, I, I hope he's listening. Do you get it? I mean, do you get it? I'm so glad we came today. Also for pastor, bishop, prophet, whoever is speaking. Oh God, let, let him emphasize this thing. I hope my husband is hearing. I hope he's hearing. Some of us on the way home or at we, we, hey, how did you find the sermon? Not for any reasons, because we are super, supervising their work. We have become the invigilators for their exam. Forgetting that you have an exam paper in front of you, which they have told you, wife, do A, B, C, D. Wife, know this and know that and know that. And for many of us, we haven't finished answering our own exam questions that are in front of us. We haven't finished. We have jumped from our chair and because the husband is sitting right next beside us, we have become supervisors. Some of us have a good sense of what we think a husband should do or not do, or how he should do what he should do. Me, I remember, I remember how many times I used to think, let me. <laughs> I, I used to have an expectation that if it is a Christian home, my husband must call the family for family devotions, number one. Number two, he needs to make sure that those devotions happen like on a regular basis. If it's daily, if it's every week to challenge, he must make sure that it is done. Number three, when he's doing it too, I have very clear understanding or picture of how he should do it. He should make sure that the session is interesting. He should be able to speak in a way or engage in a way that, that makes the children also able to participate. You know, he should not go on and on talking uh, and bore the children. He should introduce some fun elements which should teach them at the same time. All these things, I, I, I did not like, I didn't write them out or anything like that. Too, but I'm telling you what I realized after I had run that race. Because it began at first like a desire that the thing should be happening. Then I realized that after I desired, in case or when it happens, I'm still marking script. Then I'll be upset or I'll be annoyed. I'll be irritated if it's, it's not going a particular way. And if it's not happen, happening on a regular basis too, I'm, I'm, I'm troubled. If it's not happening at all, that one too, wahala. And you see, I did not find it appropriate that I should be the one organizing it. After all, I have set the agenda. I know, you know, I'm Mrs. Eh, I'm also a believer. 
And I don't know where I got that idea from, but I was quite confident that that's what should happen and that's how it should happen. You see? Who made me a judge? Who made me the overseer? Who, 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 who at all gave me that job? At that time, I was not interested. If I, I didn't even have an idea, any clue that I, I had unfinished work myself to do. I felt I was doing well. I'm working. I'm, you know, I'm cooking. I'm doing everything. Uh, I'm cooperating here and there and so on and so forth. Oh, what, could, what could possibly be wrong with me? I mean, honestly, what, what, what could be the gap? And in all the areas that I felt that he should be doing that he's not doing, I felt that if it were me, I'll do it and I'll do it well. I mean, I know how to do it. Ah. In fact, there were times when, and I'm giving the example of the devotions, there are many other things, but there were times when I will, I will you know, the, 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 the arrangement that you do just to show show something or communicate a message, something like that. Hey. So you, you organize the devotion just so they can see how it's done. You organize the devotion so that it will prompt them that, hey, you see, this is, this is what we are talking about. You are not doing it. Come and see how it's done. You should organize it. And this is how you should behave, you know? So, oh, sisters. Hmm. That is it too. It took the mercy and the grace of God to question me that, ah, you at all, who called you to, 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 to be the supervisor over your husband's work? And by, by any means, where did you see that you are supposed to make sure that family gathers together in devotion every something, something, and all this, your marking scheme that you have drawn up, where did you get it from? Where? Who? 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 Who gave you that calling? That you have set this expectation in your head, and it has become a point of dissatisfaction and discontent so you mark him and in a certain way you despise him a little bit because you feel he's not matching up he's not meeting expectations meanwhile you are struggling though you don't think so you are you are struggling in that case with you know your your high handedness and your nose in the air and the thing that you are doing is very irritating to God. It's a, you know, detestable that, that I carried myself in that way, but I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it at all. I am not called to assess my husband's performance as a husband and say this or that, even in my heart, I'm not. The one that they said I should do, I have not finished though. Do you see? Today, 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 there was something I think my husband said or something, and I was thinking in my head, ah, like, why, why are you saying such a thing? Why should you call me? Why should you do this? The Holy Spirit, ah, fast. It's like, my friend, you better calm down. It looks like you are exalting yourself. You have forgotten you are a servant. You have forgotten you. Something has changed inside your head. Calm down quickly before we bring you down. I said, Father, please forgive me. I am a servant. I am nothing but a servant, which is a privilege in the kingdom of God because my Lord himself proclaimed joyfully that he granted, he didn't come to, to be saved. He came to serve and to give his life, to spend himself for many. So if I am called to be a servant, that they call me left, right, and center and say this and you know say that, whatever it is, ah, I'm being privileged, I'm being blessed. It's a privilege because that's the, that's the seat of Jesus. 
That's the glory of Jesus. That's the role he came joyfully to play. What is my embarrassment in being like my master? What is my embarrassment in thinking like my master? You see, everyone will give a personal account. Focus on your account. Focus on your account. This thing of he, 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 it will not lead any of us anywhere. Because what you will find is that when you appear before God to give the account, you will have nothing to show for yourself and what you were sent to do in that marriage. All you'll be full of is accusations and complaints. And have you noticed that God doesn't like either of them? You, you, it will not give you any marks. He said, do everything without grumbling or complaining. So the complaint will not fly. Then he says that there is somebody who is officially appointed the accuser of the brethren. He's not God's best friend. Do you think if I appear there looking like an accuser, I will be granted favor? I will be put in the same treatment as they put the official accuser. Do you understand? So I cannot go and stand in front of my heavenly father with any of these things that I was walking around and thinking. And God said to me, watch your thoughts. Because when he teaches you, he teaches you. You learn to change your behavior. You see, you learn to change your behavior. So there are th certain things you don't say anymore. You do things differently. But from time to time, your thoughts may start, you know, going off on a tangent. Then when, when you are thinking the thoughts that that are uh, like despising the person or the thoughts that are insulting the person or the thoughts that, you know, if those thoughts were spoken out loud, you know that heaven will not applaud you. He said, watch your thoughts because I've already said that I am a God who looks in the inside. I look at the heart. Not outward only. Outward, I can see. I can see you are trying. You are doing well. Keep trying. And I want you to also be aware that I hear your thoughts too. You think your thoughts are private. They are not. Your thoughts are visible and broadcast before heaven, the whole host. Before the throne of God, your thoughts are constantly broadcast. There's nothing hidden before him <laughs> with whom we have to make do nothing so say watch your thoughts so you correct your thoughts as well the way you are correcting your behavior is good also correct your thoughts when those strange things come to mind and they do come correct them bring them into alignment with the word of god throw the ugly thoughts out, throw the complaint thought out, throw the selfish thoughts out, throw the proud thought out, throw all of those things out and rather say what the word of God says. Choose what the word of God says. Declare what the word of God says. So for example, you, you can very well look at a man, let's say a, a, a husband, who is misbehaving himself in quotes. And you know that the scripture said that because of the believing wife, the husband, even if he's an unbeliever, is holy. So when you look at that person, you can choose your thoughts can be, you know, he's, he's annoying me, he's being unfair, he's treating me this, he's doing that, he's doing that. Those can be thoughts. But you can also start aligning yourself to the scripture and say, oh, holy man, pana. you see, like a person that God has said is holy. Look at what the enemy is trying to, to just, you know, do with him, like drag him left, right and center. 
then you can have your conversations with God better because you and God will be speaking the same language. But the point he's making to you and I this evening, sis, is that each will give a personal account of themselves to God. And everyone must prepare to meet their God. Do you think that the personal account, you are going to give it when you die alone? Don't be deceived. The court of heaven sits every day. And judgments are being given concerning us daily, constantly, says, constantly. So when he says that be not deceived, whatever a man sows, that he shall reap. It means that what you are sowing, it will be assessed and you will receive the recompense. Not, 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 not only in heaven, but here. That's why some of us sowed selfishness. We got strife. We got division. We got fighting. We got opposition because we sowed selfishness. We carried ourselves as if we were the most important people. But Christ had told us that we should consider others of greater significance, more important than us. But when we forgot and flipped the coin, we got the fruit of our labor. And many times we really did not enjoy it. I hope you get me, dear sisters. So I'll say, oh, yes, but there is this. So what am I to do? I'm seeing it. The behavior is, 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 is standing in my face. Is this, is that. Yes, let it stand for the moment, okay? Let us stand in the face for the moment. Take a moment and consider that you will be giving a personal account to God for your life, not according to what you think you could get away with, but according to what the scriptures have said as your standard for living as a wife and as a believer. That account, you know, take some moments to to focus on that one and ask yourself how, how that is going. In fact, don't ask yourself, ask, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, ask your heavenly father, father, how am I doing? Do you realize that the word of God said, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. Now that depends on whether you judge yourself correctly. If you judge yourself, if you check yourself, the checking the Holy Spirit will help you. You see, then he doesn't need to put you in trouble because you will, you, you will be corrected more or less on the spot. But if you refuse to judge yourself and you just think you are okay, you are just going forward because, oh, you know, you are better than you were yesterday. You may miss a few points and, and you may struggle here and there. Focus on your exam sheet. The time is short. Focus on your exam paper. There's a lot at stake. Please focus on your exam paper. You are also writing exams. You are not an invigilator. You are also writing your own paper. As a wife, as a mother, you are also writing a paper. So, I pray that this helps someone. It helps someone because we need it. We need that focus. We need that attention. Did you realize the scripture said that the foolish woman tears down her own, her, her own house, her house with her own hands, but the wise one builds it up. And I wondered, ah, but, but why, how? Then you ask, what is foolishness? The fool is the one who says in his heart, there's no God, right? What is foolishness? Foolishness, therefore, is godlessness. Foolishness, therefore, is 
wherever I am using the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of my flesh and the wisdom of my feelings and emotions rather than the wisdom of God, rather than the word of God, I'm walking in foolishness. And like I was sharing my own journey around family devotions, I was being foolish also because I did not know the truth, you see. So obviously my lack of knowledge was bringing something into my, my house that should not have come. My lack of understanding was stealing my peace because all of this, this supervision that I was doing it, it, oh, it was stressful, sis. It was really stressful. It, it was causing irritation and all of those things. Charlie, it wasn't easy. You see, it was stealing my peace. With my own hands, you see, with my own hands, due to my lack of understanding, I don't know. I did not understand that what I am sowing, what I am doing is something that destroys my marriage. I thought I was just doing marriage. I thought I was right. I thought I was okay. Do you understand? That's how the foolish woman destroys her own, with her own hands, her own hands, her own behavior, her own words. But the wise woman, What's that? What is wisdom? The wise woman is the one who has received the instruction of the Holy Spirit. The one who has received the word of God. The wise woman. She builds it. How does she build it? By obeying the word of God. When she's walking in obedience, the house is being built. There's work to be done. There's no time to do supervision. There's work to be done. That... Lord, open my own eyes because wherever I'm walking in foolishness, I may be tearing down my own home. Please open my eyes because when you are walking in foolishness, you typically don't realize it. You think that all is well, you are okay. The problem is the other party. You don't know that what you are reaping, you sowed or you contributed to sowing so that you may seek help. From the most high God, of course. Where else does our help come from? Where? So, please, personal focus, okay? God bless you. Now, as we had said tonight, we want to share with each other. So, my floor remains open up. It was because I didn't see any hand. So me there, I was feeling free. I was talking, I was talking. But let me just prompt you so that if you have a testimony you want to share, there's something you want to share with us or a question or questions that, you know, the Lord is stirred up in, in your heart, please, you can raise a hand or you can unmute and ask or share as the case may be. I, yes, oh, hi, Auntie Efe. I thought yeah. they will be reading some of the questions from the previous, um, was it over the weekend? We had so many questions. So I thought that was going to be today. Oh, no, no, no. We, we finished um, the questions we had. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. We, we, we went a full one hour past time. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yes, and finished all the questions. Okay, so, so new questions. If there are okay. any. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Okay. All testimonies. Hello, Pai. Okay, was accidental? 
No, I have a question. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so um, I, I'm battling with um, something. I, do, I just want a bit of clarity on it. So, you know, sometimes um, as, as women, we, we or, or let me speak for myself, sometimes um, you, I find that, oh, um, I have maybe a Bible study group to, to go to, or I have a, a church meeting to go to. And because of that, um, I, for want, of a, for want of a word, forsake, or I don't attend to my husband at that moment. And that's probably the moment that he needs me. Sometimes I battle with, with whether, sometimes the battle is, okay, so um, is, which, which is more important? Which should, I, which should I sacrifice or which should I pay more attention to? So I don't know if you can just, uh, just please help me, uh, if you can elaborate for me. I don't know whether I'm, I'm making sense of the question. I believe so, sis. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And um, thank you for asking that. It's a very important one, especially for those of us, you know, the more we love the Lord, the more we want to be in, in, immersed in his word, in prayer and all of those. So it's important. Exactly. Yes, it's important. Um, so I know my sisters, sisters, we are all here. The way... <laughs> I'm looking at some people, which includes all of you. And they have uh, put this red mute sign in front of them and smiling. Meanwhile, you know that you should respond to this question too and share your own experience. You know, it will be a blessing. So the floor is open, sisters. Any of our sisters who um, would like to contribute anything to this? Okay. Hello, yes. sisters. Hello, sister. like, <laughs> Good hello. Yes, yes. Good evening, Sister Efe. Good evening, dear sisters. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for this time together in our Father's presence. Really, really awesome indeed. I want to ask Sister Pai. Sister Pai, I hope you haven't muted. Please unmute. What do you think that father expects of you. So for example, <laughs> your husband needs to have supper, yet uh, there's a Zoom at the same time. So he hasn't eaten and there is a Zoom and you are an attend attendee, you are going to attend. What, what do you think that father <laughs> expects of you? That you attend the Zoom, that he wait for you for one hour, two hours and eats after 10 or whenever, or that you feed him. Share with us. Let's share. Let's let's discuss. Please share okay. With Pastor Adeline, prior yes, to please. honestly speaking, prior to um probably joining um uh, TWW. TWW being in my school, I probably honestly would have gone to the Zoom <laughs> and mm -hmm. done the Zoom before okay. the but now I find that okay my mm. pr uh, not priority but then my pur my purpose as a helpmate is be to support my husband which is at the time that he needs to have dinner mm. however honestly there are days when I still struggle with oh I want to do the zoom or oh I want to go to the church meeting or oh, can't mm -hmm. he wait for just an hour so mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's honestly still a struggle for me, but I think lately, to be honest, I'm trying to do more of the, of the health needs than running to the Zoom. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, you know, as you were talking, what was standing out, which is, which is the path that the Lord helped me on, is that any time the I or the me Mm -hmm. It's very loud in the whole thing. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to go to the Zoom. Can't you wait? <laughs> I just want to go and listen to the program. I want mm -hmm. to go to the church. I want to be in fellowship. I want <laughs> to pray. The I know. When mm -hmm. the I is plenty like that, 
-hmm. It's not the way of the wisdom of God. That that's not the wisdom of God is not my will, but yours be done, Lord. Yeah. You see, it's not I I feel I want to, mm -hmm. I don't da, 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 da. it's not like that. So anytime that you see the eye rising, you know, mm -hmm. today I don't feel like being sexually intimate. I don't feel like cooking this. I don't want to do this. I want to go here. I want to do this. What about me? What about my feelings? What are you think? Then we are moving in another direction that is mm -hmm. outside of the scope of our kingdom. This kingdom of God, it doesn't operate like that. Mm -hmm. So, so these are just, I'm just dropping these hints so that the question and okay. answer is not just do it or don't do it. Okay. but it, okay. it, it can speak to more people than one question you know okay. can reach yes. you see so anytime that you see that is it that i'm prioritizing me if okay. the answer is yes it's not of the kingdom it's not the okay. wisdom of god you okay. know is it that i'm putting my needs ahead you know like for example oh i want i want to watch this program but he wants to watch football can't he just oh. can't, can't i just watch no <laughs> tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. it's not like that you know, and I, I was so happy with Sister Ife's sharing on the quiet time because even something, something like quiet time, which in our minds is supposed to be, oh, you know, this is the wisdom of God is how it should be, you know, yet behind the scenes, you can see that we are still being some way sneaky. It's about us. Have you noticed sometimes the prayer during such quiet times, the prayer is for you? You know, Lord, teach us, you know, how to, then, then you are praying horizontal prayer so that the guy will hear the prayer. You see, you're not praying. It's not a vertical prayer. It's not about God honoring him. No, you are speaking. Sometimes my prayer, and sometimes it's as if preaching. The prayer that I'm praying is as if I'm talking to somebody. And so I had to learn to stop and separate myself, go into the secret place where I'm with Father alone. <laughs> Father alone. You see, so anytime that the eye wants to rise, you want to realize very quickly that no, this is not the way of the Lord. And it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter whether it comes clothed in something that looks religious mm. or godly. No, no, the Bible says that the woman should not pray or prophesy with her head uncovered. Sometimes we expose the man, you know, leave him to his feet, and we are busy praying and prophesying somewhere. No. So when you look at it that way, you realize that the spirit of the Lord is prompting and edging us on, you know, in, in his way. That's how come you can get somebody faithful in her household as a housewife, taking care of her spouse and children, husband, children, um, house helps, people at home, etc. And she will finish her assignment and she will be able to say, Father, I have brought you glory by accomplishing the work you gave me. That's what Jesus said. I have brought you glory by finishing the assignment you gave me. Sometimes we've stepped outside of the assignment with all sorts of unnecessary things or things that are itchy ears. I want to go here. I want to do this. I want to do that. No, you see, so that's the idea. I think that this should probably give you an idea of the answer. Thank you. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Adline. Thank you. This is spy. In fact, it's a very, 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 very wonderful question. It's a question that we are all learning from. Do you remember maybe adding on to this conversation, the scripture that said that because of you, the name of the Lord is blasphemed among the Gentiles, eh? and the Lord, I remember, you know, speaks to us about these things, because we are also reflecting Jesus Christ to the people around us, whether they are believers or they are not. This is not about my husband is a believer or my husband is not a believer. It's neither here nor there. My calling remains to show him my godly conduct, my reverent conduct my obedience and my submission. And God said he will use that one to minister. So actually, it helped me to see what I do at home as ministry. You realize that when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, 
He was not preaching, but he was preaching. When the woman came and washed his feet, she, what did she say? What did she say? And yet, right? The women who took care of the needs of Jesus and his disciples, the record is there by the Holy Spirit. What preaching is recorded? No, their act of ministry to him as the assignment is recorded for us. So when you and I begin to see more and more the breadth of our assignment and, and that Christ is in it. So when I'm cooking and when I'm serving and when I'm smiling and laughing and creating, creating the atmosphere for joy, for smiles, for jokes, for laughter, for, for peace in the home, I do it as representing Jesus. If Jesus were to spend three days in my home, I suspect it will not be a prayer service from crane crane to crane crane. He knows that my husband must eat. Like when he resurrected, he came, he prepared the food they ate. It is all part of him. And as you minister that way, you are ministering. You are serving. It's ministry. It's beautiful. That, that, ah, what are the words? That taking care of the things that God has assigned you to take care of with his love, with his smile, showing the grace of God, showing the graciousness of your father who lives in you. Ah, it's nice, Papa. And you, you can do it in communion with the Holy Spirit. As you are doing it, you are speaking to the Holy Spirit. As you are doing it, you are thanking God. As you are doing it, you are praying for the person you are serving. And so you are, cooking, you are preparing the food or you are sitting watching the football song, whatever it is that you're supposed to do. It gives you the opportunity to thank God for the life of this man or this child or this whatever you are doing. It's such a blessing. So I wanted to add that as well. As we go, as we come, we are ministering. And God grants us grace to be able to do the Zoom and the things too in between. But the priority, you know, which one you do first, you, you start with your assignment. Typically, you start with your assignment. And you do it with the Lord. It makes it such a sweet one. Sister Frida. Don't let us miss what you were going to share with us, please. Please do go ahead. Forgive me for having you wait. Is it on the same? Or is it a, a different one, Sister Frida? Oh, well, um, thank you so much, Sister. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I, I didn't know you so much. I was going to thank you for good but yes, um, I just wanted to share following our sister's question, which Pastor Dan has responded to. Mm -hmm. I used to find myself a lot in that situation. And uh, many times my husband will complain that maybe he needed my attention or the children needed my attention, but I had to probably be on a Zoom call or get something ready for service and ministry and all of that. And even... Um, sometimes neglecting or having divided attention and still going ahead with that call because I felt or I thought I had to be there, there was a certain level of discomfort or guilt that came with it. And um, I quite remember um, some weeks, maybe about a month or two ago on one of the marriage calls, Pastor line shared something in that regard. And um, I, I remember the example she gave was about the fact that sometimes maybe the Zoom call that you are even neglecting him to go and attend will be recorded and you can always make time and catch up. I never thought about it that, that way. Um, yes, not all of them are recorded, but definitely some of them are and there's always a way to catch up. But I share this to say that 
ever since I heard that and I took a cue or a lesson from that, I've had peace like never before, really. <laughs> I haven't struggled with anything because um, I, I have under, come to understand through the teaching that um, we, are, we, we benefit from on this platform, the need to make um, our husbands first and um, our homes for that matter. And then the, 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 the service and the many other things that we do. So yes, I have been in that situation before. And like I said, when I learned the importance or the need to attend to him first and make him first, literally, especially in a case like that, I've had so much peace. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, sis. Thank you for sharing your work as well. That really blesses us. Thank you very much. God is good. God is good. Amen. Mm -hmm. So sisters, we have a little bit of, a little bit more time. And um, I hope that you will share your own work or parts of your work or testimony, if you don't mind talking about what God has done, um, it will be a blessing. The floor is open, please. Please, mine is a question. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> So uh, what is the, at what point can we have time for ourselves? Is it all about the man? Or at yes. least we can have about 5% for ourselves too, or it is 100% the man. Then that means we don't even have identity at all. Everything you are doing is like, Sometimes it's become a bit scary for me too. Mm. Because it's like it is all about him. You know? Mm. And before coming to marry him, you've had a life maybe like 25 years of your life. Mm. So do you just I don't know, I'm trying to find to understand the balance. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you so much, my sister. That's a, a place where I, I, I think that many of us have, have been as well, and it's, it's good. Yes, please, Sister Nature. Are you speaking to the same question, please? I see your hand up. Yes, please. Um, I was trying to unmute. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, I remember mm. the first time I listened to Pastor Adeline's teaching, I told myself that it's lingering on human rights abuse. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically because everything she said advocated not on oneself, but on the other. Now, we have been called not onto ourselves. In fact, I said that anyone who holds onto their life will lose it. Now, there were a lot of reasons why he said that. Reasons being that holding onto oneself and holding onto our lives is um, concentration on self. And the flesh profited nothing, but it's the spirit that profited much. So in our bid to worship God, in our bid to be obedient to his commandments, we realize that, you know, and this afternoon even we read something, I think in uh, First Peter, and it says that if you love one another, if you love your brother and you love your sister, that is when the light of God would shine through you. So without the light of God shining through us, uh, means that there's no love within us. Loving is giving. Loving is not centered on oneself. 
because scripture says that if you love yourself, you're going to lose that self-love. Now we have been called onto a greater calling other than ourselves. And this is how I look at it. Even when we put everything aside, common sense tells us that the maximum we can live on this earth, even now, the, um, the maximum you can live is around um, maybe 80, 90 years, you know. But life eternity represents ever, forever and ever. So are you willing to sabotage the eternity you know, with the discontentment we are feeling right now against the 80, 90 years, you know, what would you tell the Lord that I gave you a husband and that became a curse to you? That because I gave you a husband, you were unable to obey me. You were unable to live out the love that I taught you to live out. So my sisters, I mean, sometimes, I mean, we all get there. We all get to that point where we feel that I'm losing it. What about me? What about me? But immediately you make it about you, you never win. But when you give it up to Christ, he even blesses it more. Give and it will come back to you. A few measure press down, shaking together, shall men bring them to your bosom, including our husband. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, Sister Nature. God bless you. And well, I'm so glad to see um, sisters with hands up to add to this in one way or the other. This is wonderful. So my sister who asked the question, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Thank you so much. Sister Adwa, could you please go ahead? Hope you're not struggling to unmute. Hope you're not struggling to unmute. No, I'm okay. okay. Good evening to us all. Um, I remember joining um, this fellowship somewhere around February. And one thing that um, kept on ringing in my ears, as the if it kept on teaching us in the marriage school, it is never about us, but it is about the Lord and then the two becoming one. So, um, for me, I, I used to hear that a lot, but it's almost sounded like a cliche when I was in the marriage. But after hearing it from Sister Efe, it became so real to me. And I realized that as I kept on giving my all, I saw that my marriage started blossoming. When I started giving it all, not all as in, focusing on like doing it for man but on to god giving it all to god i started realizing that i was like i was rather getting refreshed each and every day so i think that it's it is it is never about us it is about the big picture that god has called us into rather than i mean we thinking that we will lose ourselves when we give our all. It's rather a blessing when you give your all. And then also I wanted to speak on um, the parity where you you go in for like um, giving it, um, making the time for your husband rather than um, going for a Zoom meeting or a Bible study church or something. Um, like, Sometimes the Zoom class clashes with the time that we are supposed to do something in the kitchen or like to give a service to our husbands. And for me, what helped me is the power of use uh, multitasking. So whilst I'm in the kitchen doing, I mean, my food and all that, I have an earpiece in my ear and I am listening. So I just wanted to add that bit that we can also multitask where mm -hmm. we can yes as ladies i know that okay let me speak for myself i can multitask a lot so mm -hmm. i don't know okay. about other um ladies so we can also use that act to i mean enjoy fellowship with god while serving thank, thank you very much god bless you sister Joa. thank you thank you for sharing with us God bless 
Sister Dahlia. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sisters. Can you hear me, please? Yes, please, sis. Amen. So I want to share from my testimony or from what happened with me. Still God helping us. But um, before I go deeper with the Lord and before I hear the teaching from Sister F, from Pastor Adeline, actually it was all about men. It was all about him. It was all about what he's doing. It was all about his life. Even I neglect myself, neglect everything, my prayer life, my personal life. It was all about it. But <laughs> when the Holy Spirit takes the place, it's all changed. It's now, it's not all about me even. It's all about God. It's all about the work of God. It's all about the ministry to this husband. It's still God helping us. Still God helping me. But <laughs> with every time, with, with every time that I'm going through testing, that God teach me something, but it's, it's teach me even it's all about his goodness. It's all about his work. It's not about men, actually. But the teaching here, I thank God for the teaching in this school, in this uh, uh, platform, that will teach us to be minister to this husband. And this is a like very important part, to be a wise woman, to be not foolish women that we are like uh, perish our house in our hands. To the Lord has opened my eyes. Uh, like it is it, is not your God. Your husband's not your God. I'm your God. Look to me. Take the love from me. Um, I am the re the source. I am the source of love. I am the source of care. I give you my son as a gift. How you will treat him? And he's still helping me. Yeah. <laughs> till today there's mistakes happen but the lord is still helping me but where i've been and when i'm here it's just the grace it's just the grace who guides me and the second point i want to speak about is about the zoom about the zoom i was just open the zoom every time every moment even I was hiding from my husband, like going to the room, doing my work, like just like, let me just do home homework so he will see me that I'm working so he will not look for me. Um, even I put, you know, the Zoom headphone in my earpiece. I cover my hair so he will not see it. And I just like running away. And I looking like my husband, he noticed. And he gets so angry. And some stuff I don't care about. Some stuff I don't care about in the home, like more than Zoom. And I just realized, wow, that I should be minister to my husband to not come against what I what I'm doing because the thing I'm doing oh, we lose is right. Today, yeah. Huh? Sorry. Uh huh. Yes. We seem so to lose you briefly. The thing. Yeah. So. so the thing what I did, if I do it in this side, the husband that Can I ministered to him, yes, please. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, please. Go ahead. It was breaking a little bit, but go ahead. Yes, yes please. So that when I minister to him, even through the Zoom, because the thing I did is good. But when I do it in this way, he will... He will he will hate what I'm doing. He don't love. He will not love what I'm doing. So I just like praying in that time. God give me wisdom for what time I need to open, what time I need to close. Because the thing in this ministry, there is a recording. So I can always go back to the record. I can always go back to recording and hear. So and and I can put the peace in my house and presence of God through my behavior and amen i just want to share that god bless you thank you thank you for letting me share 
Thank you so much, sis. Thank you for sharing with us. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Joyce, please over to you and then Sister Frida. Thank you so much. Um, I, I came to this uh, Zoom halfway. And mm -hmm. so um, I've just been hearing the testimonies, but I just wanted to add that what I've noticed is that, um, you know, when you're, when you're a wife, when you're a mother, you know, our time is um, taken up by our duties to our husband and to our children. And um, it's only recently that I've come to realize that it's a, it's, it's a ministry. Mm -hmm. um, but prior to that, what I realized is that by thinking about ourselves, because, you know, we're yearning, or at least, I mean, I had four children under the age of five. And so my time was not my own. And I was yearning for a bit of me time. But by yearning for that me time and um, almost craving for it um, after doing all that I needed to do, it was actually becoming detrimental to my health um, in the sense that I was trying to carve up additional time because I felt that my time was not my own. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think when we, uh, you know, dwell too much on the I, 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 like we've been saying, it can be to our detriment, um, particularly our health, because we're trying to create additional uh, moments for ourselves rather than thinking about, you know, the joy in serving and um, in ministering to the blessings that we have. So. I think that's now that my children are older, I see that um, clearly now. And um, yeah, it, you know, all what's been said is very helpful. But I think when you're going through it for the first time, it's very difficult to see it that way. So I just wanted to share that, you know, with having older children and also with realizing that it's a ministry. Um, yeah, that, that I'm just grateful um you know for what i have and i think multitasking too is is, is the way to go mm, wonderful thank you sis. god bless you god bless you thank you for sharing with us glory to god sister frida please um are you still available to share with us i think you had your hand up once or twice. Yes, please. Okay, so say if I'm here. Yes. Um, again, um, thank you to you. You know, I, I, I wanted to mention the side messages help. Again, from um, personal experience that this concern about um, us and putting ourselves, um, loving and making time for ourselves and all of that, it is good, it's, it's important. But I have observed how um, these days, especially on social media, lots of people seem to be talking and promoting self-love, self-care. Some people will even tell you that it is it is selfish, but good in a way. And I don't know when selfish became good, but I'm, I'm sure um, you understand what it is that they have been saying. And so um, that sometimes, even for, for me and for some people that I have spoken to, that knowledge or that desire sometimes um, makes it what, what, what was the word? Sometimes that knowledge or desire can even drive you as an individual to deliberately neglect some of the things that you would ordinarily do because um, we keep hearing that you need to put yourself first, make some time for yourself and all of that. Definitely making time for ourselves is good. Resting is good so you don't get burned out and you can give your best and all of that. But what I have realized and experienced, which is why I am I'm sharing is that when um, I intentionally 
based on what we are being taught here, intentionally commit to making more time for my people, my home, in, in this case, making them a priority, serving, putting myself first. I find that in, in giving out, I tend to receive even more than I have ever gotten, more than I could have done for myself. Um, I wish there was another way, um, a better way to put this, but th th that has just been it for me that as I um, try to give out more and pay attention and all of that, yes, I end up getting a lot more attention, a lot more care, um, a lot more gift acts of service and everything for my husband in this case, more than I could have gotten. And I want to believe that there, there, there's no formula to it, but it is also part of fulfilling scripture because that, that, that's how I, I see that as I give, then the Lord makes provision for my husband to pay more attention and give back to me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Glory to God. Sisters, it's so very lovely when we, we all kind of um, put our, whichever experiences the Lord allows us to share and, and inputs and insights the Lord allows us to share. It's such a refreshing um, thing that I am very grateful for. And also for the questions that are asked one thing that I love about the questions, they are questions that speak to real experience. They are not abstract questions. They are not theoretical questions. They are actually really felt questions. Questions that, you know, we walk through for real, for sure. And so in bringing those out for us, I, I, I see that it's the Lord that stirs it up because he wants us to engage on some of those angles and, and to draw us all out to see what he wants us to gain. So I'm very grateful and I thank God for giving us this opportunity um, to share together as we have done. And sweet sisters, talking about who do you live for? Let none of us live for a husband. Let none of us live for our children. They cannot be our God. They cannot be the object of our lives. Neither can we live for ourselves if we are children of God, because he has said that he paid that price so that those of us who live will no longer live for ourselves. It's very important. It's actually just outright stated so that we no longer live for ourselves, but we live for him, right? We do get encouraged by the Galatian scripture that talks about the fact that I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, you know, this life, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God has often in, in some of these are conversations, drawn our attention to situations where we have even idolized husband or idolized marriage or idolized children or idolized job. And your eyes are upon them as the ones that, you know, like your life is all about them. No, that is not correct. That is not what the scriptures teach us to do. And also my life cannot be about me. The scripture says I shouldn't do it that way. So what then? What then? You see, there, there are many things that the world says and, you know, we all were in the world and then the Lord brought us 
we know what we know. And then he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, which means he has new information for us to get. The world doesn't live for God. The world doesn't have a, you know, doesn't, doesn't have this God to live for. So the world does what it does and says what it says. And it sounds good and it sounds wise because what else can they say? They don't, they don't serve the Lord. They are not trying to live the scriptures. They are not trying to live the scriptures. So you can't blame them. They are living their own life. But for you and I, there's a different track. In the world, there's no power and strength of the Holy Spirit to refresh you. But in the kingdom of God, there is. The life I live, the life you live, the things you do, the things I do, we need to do them only because the Lord says we are to do them. So we do it in obedience to our father. Okay, so we are saying that father said I should do this, so I'm doing it. Like we were talking about earlier, when you read the scriptures that says wives do this, you are doing it not because of any other reason, apart from the fact that you are a daughter of God and you, you desire to do what's pleasing to your father. So this is our journey. But the journey is a road, though. you know, all these things we grapple with and then God gives us help and then we go forward and we ease into it. So it's, it is part of the journey. I'd like to encourage every one of us who is perhaps, you know, also confronting the same concern and the same fear. I want to encourage you. There is a strength and there's a refreshing and there's a grace that's not known to the world, but it's known by the children of God. And if, if you would like to, and in all sincerity, speak that to the Lord and say, Lord, I am tired. Can you please help me? Father, it feels as if I've spent the whole day on my feet, taking care of this, that, that, working this, that, that. Can you please help me? What is the understanding you want me to have? Why must I do all of these things? What, what do I do? How can I have some rest? And God has a, such a variety of ways of responding to these SOS calls. Some he does instantly. Some he, he brings certain things to you over a period, he will answer that question by all means. He will by all means point you at a pace that you are able to take. It will be personalized and very customized. All our sisters have shared, and as they've shared, they've shared their own you know, personal journey. And sometimes it might be even difficult to articulate fully how that journey was. It's just because of the way the Holy Spirit is able to speak to me and my, you know, my own peculiar concern and whisper and the fear and anything that I may have. So, sweet sis, don't, don't, don't worry at all. Anyone in that position, don't worry at all. Ask the Lord. Father, help me, show me about this thing. He will do it in various ways and you will cross this season. And also, I would encourage you on this thing. Anything you do, anything you do, 
do it because the word of God says so, not because you heard anything else or it feels good or it doesn't feel good. Do it because that's what the word of God says to do. And when you do it, like if you can be conscious of the reason why you are doing so that you can be glad in your heart. It helps. It really, 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 really helps. It really helps. So you serve where you serve. You serve in the ways you serve because your heavenly father is looking at you and smiling at you and congratulating you. And he is our rest in him. Like my confidence is in him that he will not, he will not let me be destroyed. There were times and seasons that it looked as if, look, the whole world was coming for everything from, from me. And I think all of us walk through that, especially when the children are younger and, and stuff like that. It's like, ah, you barely sit down, they are calling you. You are on your way to sit, hey, something needs to be done. The chair doesn't know you. Say, hey. God is with us in those seasons, okay? God is with you in that season. Don't let your heart think for a moment that you are not taken care of. Your God, my God, is our backbone. He takes care of my interest and takes care of your interest. If you have any concerns about your interests, that someone is not looking out for you. I want to recommend Jesus to you. I want, I'm, I'm, and I'm not joking. I want to recommend that you, dear, dedicate yourself to doing what you see the word of God wants you to do. And simply, simply talk to your heavenly father and say, Father, I don't know who is taking care of my interests. I hand over my interest to you. Can you please be cover my interest for me? Take care of my interest. I just give you that case to, 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 to take care of. Just do that and relax and just go forward doing what God calls you to do. He does a far better job than you or I could ever hope to do. So I will leave it at that. And I see past that line you've unmuted. So please add on because this has multiple facets and I think the Lord is staring different angles for us. Please yes, go ahead. Please. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Thank you, dear sisters. Yeah, so I, I just want to um, touch on a few things. You know, like the, the questions that sisters are asking are valid questions that, it, it does come up from time to time. And those are questions we have asked before. And the contributions, the sharings this evening are all very much in alignment. And I thank God so much. Sisters, I, I want you to always remember, you know, whenever you are pondering about marriage, do well to think about the analogy that Apostle Paul talked about, where he compared the marriage relationship to the relationship between Jesus Christ and the church. That helped me so much to take my mind off the folklore, the Cinderella stories to the truth. Now, I remember one day I sat on a panel together with other um, counselors and you know, we're sharing, we're speaking to married people. And one of the speakers said that, it's actually a 50-50 relationship between the husband and the wife. But that's not true, that's not correct. The relationship between Jesus Christ and the church was never 50-50. Jesus did not leave his father's throne in glory to come and be with us, his bride, to give us 50. No, please, no. He went all the way to the cross and gave his very life. It was 100% that he gave and zero from us. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it wasn't even 
a case of I love you, I love you too. No, we didn't love him. We didn't even believe in him. We were still sinners at the point when he died for us. So when you look at it from the biblical perspective, you start to get an understanding. Now that kind of understanding begins to strengthen you. So when we started off in our marriages, Christ and the church, we were like the church that wasn't born again or whatever. You know, we were, we were selfish. You know, we were, we were like the church. We could quit like Judas would quit. We could, we could deny our husbands like Peter would say, I don't know you. You know, we could lie. We could do the whole, do you love me? We could do all those things. But later, when we started to humble ourselves to God's word, to the truth, we realized that we started to avail ourselves to now allow the Holy Spirit to make us more and more like Christ. Something that we are not doing, we are simply yielding and he is doing through us. Therefore, we don't take the glory. But we realize that in that, we find rest. We realize that in that, the world thinks what we are saying or doing doesn't make sense. But we are not doing anything for the world. We are simply aligning to what our father is teaching us. And so whenever you think about Christ, and the church, then all the other things start to, you, you, you start to get it. Jesus Christ himself is a seed. He's called the seed of the woman. Everything you do in this life and everything God gives you is a seed. He doesn't give you a harvest, right? From the beginning, suddenly you have a harvest. No, it's a seed. What is it that you are sowing? What are you planting? Jesus planted, sowed his life, gave up his life. Today, a lot of us, all of us, we are now just like Jesus because he's on the inside of us. What are you giving? You want to find love in your marriage. You, you, want, to, you want to be honored. You want to whatever, whatever, whatever. Do you know that when people plant the harvest, there are those who have decided that let me just let go and let God. Before you become aware, in your home, there, there, you see that there is also a resulting letting go and letting God. You see that when you stop being, you know, wanting your way, doing this, you just stop. Suddenly, before you become aware, there's a harvest because on the other side too, it's working. Now, those are not things that we do with from that motive or that perspective. No, the motive is always just wanting to obey God. If you love me, you will obey me. And as you obey the Lord, suddenly your eyes will open. You realize, oh, what a struggle. In fact, one of the scriptures I was hoping to share today was from Ephesians 5, the last verse, I believe it should be 33 or so, that talks about respecting the husband and all that. And reading it from the Amplified Version, it's amazing what it talks about. And when you read all that, you find out that all of that is just a seed. And it all becomes a harvest to the one that gives it. I'll give you an example. Some time ago, when my husband is lying down to rest or whatever, and the children come running in, oh, hello, mommy, daddy, da, da, da. And he says, ah. and he, he expresses some irritation. Like, I'm tired, I'm sleeping. I'm thinking, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we are not all tired. We, me too, I'm tired. We are all tired. And, and, and there's an attitude going on in me, and sometimes I even speak it out. I had an attitude. It wasn't good, you know, but that was, what, that was the person I was at the time. But later, by the grace of God, I started to develop compassion. I started to care about what God cares about and also care about what others care about, starting from my husband. So when the children rush in, I said, oh, no, 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 daddy is sleeping. It's okay. You, you go. After. When daddy wakes up, I'll call you, okay? I didn't realize that what I was doing was a seed that was being planted. Later on, I will be the one resting. Look, mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, my food. And then he'll say, no, no, no. You guys, let's go down. So let me go and get your food. Mommy is sleeping. Shush. Mommy is sleeping. Don't disturb her. I said, hey, hey, since when? And the Lord just laid on my heart. It's a seed. You sowed it. You will harvest it. So I want to encourage you. The me, I, me, I thing. At the end of the day, the Lord knows how to reward everybody. But it's not you 
who will do the rewarding. There is, there is, a, there is a king, there is a business owner, there, there is an employer, there is a God, there is somebody that we are on assignment for, okay? Now, the other thing that we said, <laughs> human rights abuse, hey, sis, hey, <laughs> hey, uh -huh. you. Yeah, all these things, they don't tell me oh, later, later when they are frequented, then they come and share. Hey. But it is well. <laughs> but it is well. So this one too. One day I was there, and and the Lord told me that outline, you have no rights in your marriage. You don't have any rights. And I said, hey, I said, Lord, how can you how can you say I don't have any rights? And those were the times when I really used to feel like I'm your wife. You owe me conversation. You owe me attention. You owe me intimacy. Why are you laughing with somebody? What about me? Hey, it was a small feeling, though, because I, that was my right. But when the word of the Lord came to me alone in the secret place, told me, I'd like, you don't have any rights in this marriage. I said, hey, I told him, I don't understand, though. And if you don't understand, ask him, he will explain. I said, I don't understand. What do you think? I don't have right. He said, yes. And I said, Lord, how can I ever share this? Because everything he teaches you, you have to share it. You have to be a conduit of blessing. How can I share this? And especially lawyer friends and things. They don't like those type of sharings. Then the Lord told me that. He said, Adeline, you see, you don't belong to yourself. You have been bought with a price. It's, it's as if you forget that you have been purchased. Do you know that you have been purchased? Huh? Do you know? So you don't belong to yourself. You belong to the one who purchased you. And that's God. So I, I said, ah. Uh. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, okay. So he said, we don't have anything like children's rights, human rights. No, it's, it's Jesus' rights. It's all about the one who purchased us. Finish. Unless we are not in his kingdom. So then he told me about Jesus. Once again, Christ and the church always is about Jesus. He said, Jesus did not consider equality with God anything to hold on to. It means Jesus gave up his rights. And then he came to this earth like a mere mortal. Some, you know, like some mere mortal. He died a shameful death on the cross. But the guy was the creator of all things. He just came, he put away his rights. Then he told me that Adeline, Jesus did not consider equality with he, God, the father, anything to hold on to. But he humbled himself and died a shameful death on the cross. And it was he, God, the father, who gave him, he gave him a name above every name that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses. Then he said to me, Adeline, don't consider equality with your husband, anything to hold on to, but you better humble yourself. And when you humble yourself, I God, I will lift you up and I will give you a name. And I, oh, so by the time he finished sharing with me, I was done. I was healed. You have to be healed from within. Understanding had come. The one who does the lifting is God. The one who gives rest is God. The one who saves is God. The one who helps is God. There's no help you can, you can go and get first. God helps those who help themselves. Where is it written? It's not in the Bible, that statement that we have been saying all over the place. Do you see? So he taught me. These things we will be taught. And then your eyes will open. You see that? Oh. So he made it very clear. There are no rights. And I remember one message that I was supposed to share on marriage. And that was the first time I was going to share a message at Agape. So then I went to tell my senior pastor, you know, because they wanted to know what are you going to share. I said, I'll share what God has taught me. Then I decided, let me just tell him this. So that in case, yeah, I said, I said, I saw Reverend, one day the Lord said to me that I don't have rights in the marriage. Then he said, yes, Adeline, not only in the marriage, we don't have rights in this life. We don't belong to ourselves. I was like, whoa. So Reverend also confirmed it to me that, yes, that too has been his revelation. We don't live for ourselves. We can't do as we please. And that's it. Now, as you start to understand this, it humbles you. You begin to walk well. The day of our departure on this earth, we don't know. But when the time is come, there is no, my right, I want to stay further for two more minutes. No, please. It's time, it's time. 
you are here on an assignment. Now, he says that, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Why didn't he say that my body is a temple of Adline? Is it not? But Adline to me to I'm spirit. I'm spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. So my spirit, where is it? He said Adline's body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you see where we are going with it? She doesn't belong to herself. Even the body, the very existence is not hers. The marriage is not for you. The husband is not yours. Hey, so you realize that, whoa. And then he says, you are not your own. I'm reading 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. He says, you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. So he makes it clear that we have been purchased. We can't do as we please. So all that we, we are, you know, everything that we are sharing, he's laying on our heart. He's bringing us to an understanding of truth and making the word become reality because these are scriptural texts that we've read like literature. But in the marriage, marriage will make you like Christ. It will make you holy. Marriage will make the text in the Bible come alive. It will become real. Do you get it? It will, be, it will no longer be something you just read or something so cliche. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know you're not that your temple of God. I know, I know. You know. Are you sure you know? Because you have to know it from your inner man. Do you see? So he says, you were bought with a price. Then Galatians 5.17, he talks about the fact that the flesh wants what is contrary to the spirit. Hey, and the spirit wants what is contrary to the flesh. The flesh, that is part of me, you know. The Holy Spirit that came to live within me wants something else. And the flesh wants another thing. He says they are in conflict with each other so that you are not supposed to do whatever you want. So all of these scriptures began to make me realize that I cannot afford to do what Adline wants because there is too much simplicity in Adline's thinking alone, except she aligns with a wisdom higher than hers. So when you humble yourself and align you see that suddenly your thinking pattern, you now are being given the opportunity to steward the thoughts of God. The thoughts of God will show you that if you deny yourself, anyone wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. If you deny yourself, you have not lost anything. On the contrary, you have gained it all. That's what our sister was sharing. If you deny yourself, but if you don't align with the spirit, it will be confusing because the wisdom of this world is not the same as the wisdom of God. They are not in tandem. They are very different, very opposite. So, so then it looks like denying of self means that I'm losing it all. No, 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 no. It's not like that. You don't lose anything. Rather, you gain it all. So I just want to encourage you, sisters, everything we are learning, it really helps us. It's helping us to grow. It's helping us to mature. And mainly, it is helping us to become increasingly like Christ, more and more like Jesus Christ. And when you think about it, would you not rather be like Jesus Christ? Hmm? Don't you remember the way we used to be? We used to be stressed. We used to be sick headaches, stress, anger, irritation. We had love but could not love. We wanted to marry. We got married but could not do marriage. We wanted children. Children came but we were frustrated. Do you remember? But now, becoming increasingly Christ-like, do you realize you have gratitude in your heart? You have peace. Suddenly, you've come to a place of understanding. Do Do you see it? That's what it is. That's what it is. And so this Christian walk is always about loving God with every part of us and then loving our neighbor as ourselves. It's love God, love people. The loving the neighbor as yourself is where people get the confused, whatever, and feel that that means that they have to be selfish. No, if you love yourself, you will be a giver. If you love yourself, you will consider others better than you. That too is scripture. What I just said is scripture. Consider others better than you. That's scripture. Some people say, oh, love. They didn't say love them more than you. You should love them as you. But the scripture says, 
consider others better than you. The day I saw that scripture on my children's wardrobe, they had put their memory verse on the wardrobe. I went to the room one day, still irritated in my marriage. My eyes saw the scripture. I read it. I realized, no, I needed to memorize it and get it into my spirit because I did not love others better than me. I always put myself first. So as you walk this path, you see that you are being changed from glory to glory. You are being transformed just by obedience. Just by obedience. There's a supernatural work happening in you. Something is happening. The Lord is changing. Later, somebody will come to me. Oh, why? How are you? You don't, you yourself, you don't even know. It's a matter of yielding. And you see that you are being changed. So I want to encourage all of us. Anything that makes you feel irritated. Maybe you hear a teacher and feel like, ah, what are they saying? That whole irritation is not of the spirit of God. It's, it's, it's of the flesh. The flesh doesn't want it. You see? But as you press in and you're like, this is truth. This is truth. This is truth. And it's never about a human being or whatever. It's about God first. It's, we talked about idolatry. It's always God first. And then what God wants. If God tells Jonah, go to Nineveh and preach to the people to be changed. He must do it. He mustn't sit back and give reason. He must do it. If God says, I've put you into this marriage, love this person, honor this person, do this, do this. We must do it. How can we do it? By putting ourselves down. The great commission. If you elevate yourself, you can never go into the world and make disciple of anybody. Why? Because you have your time, your space, you are tired, you want to take a nap, you want to read that. And... <laughs> but it's not about us. Everything you do when you give birth, look at you and your baby. You realize it's not about you. Your sleep schedule is messed up. Everything is changed. It's all about the little one they gave you, God and the little one that has been given to you. Anything you steward, it's not about you. It's about God and then the, the thing that has been given to you. That's, that's what it is. Assignments, ministry, business, whatever. You see that you need to step out of it. When you start a business, do you just go ahead and start spending the profits, spending everything? No, 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 no. There comes a time, you don't even, everything comes, you put it back into the business, you put it back, you put it back, you put it back. You are not spending anything, no, because you put yourself out of the picture. So remember, it's like Christ and the church. He loved us so much and then he died. Hey! So if I die, how do I have conversation? How do I hold your hand? How do I hug you? Hey, hey, hey. He was showing us the method. Some of us are too alive. We are alive. We are awake. Except a grain of wheat falls down and dies. I believe it should be John 12, 24. It abides alone. But if it dies, that is when it will bear much fruit. But if it says, I can't do it, I won't sacrifice, I won't fall down and die, it becomes a very lonely, miserable grain. Just one seed, it will be sitting there. But if that grain falls down and dies, if you decide that, look, I'm going to go all out and obey God, lay myself down, Father, have your way. You will be surprised at the fruitfulness that will come out of that decision to obey him. That's how it is. So I just want to encourage you. A lot of us have misunderstood marriage because the expectation of marriage is that I should be comfortable. Everything should be easy. He does this and I do this. That's what we used to do. You do and I do. You do and I do. So those times when they don't, then we don't. There were times I used to say, you won't pray, you're sleeping. Then me too, I'll sleep. That was a foolish woman talking. Because when two of us sleep, the enemy will come. And I slept too. And they, of course, the enemy came. We, we just left. I, I mean, I wasn't in church. I said, you won't pray me to I won't pray. Because I wasn't wise. It's not about somebody. It's always about you and your walk with God. Finish. That's how it will be till we stand before him in judgment. It is about the individual's walk with God. Period. Hasn't got anything to do with what somebody did or didn't do. It's about Christ and the church. What Judas is going to do with Jesus Christ, that's neither here nor there. But Jesus must finish the assignment and bring glory to God, period. Are you like Jesus? If so, then be like him. Are you like Judas? Are you like somebody else? No. Are you like Jesus? Yes. Then be like him to the end. And you will be surprised at the peace 
Don't do this. If you hit me, I'll hit you. If you do that, I'll do the a tooth for a tooth, eye for an eye. No, that thing, that's past tense. That, thing, that, those, that way of life, we have left it behind us a long time. We don't do that. So he's not being nice to me. Therefore, I'll not be nice to him. No, 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 no. Then, then, then your work with God is suspect. Your work with God is suspect. Okay. So, yeah. So that's all I want to add. I, I believe that. Yeah, I pray that it blesses somebody. God bless you and thank you. Sister Ife. Can you hear me, please? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, sis. I thank God for these things that he has spoken to us about. And I know that it is a blessing. I'd like to ask each of us, just take a moment, give God thanks, and speak to him whatever is your heart. It's not about formula or anything, but a personal walk with God. And he starts with us wherever we are at. He doesn't despise us at any point, but he rather brings us truth and help and love and grace. Please just talk to your father. He desires you as much. He desires to hear from you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. To your name be all honor, glory, and praise forever, Lord. Thank you for these conversations. Thank you, God, for the things that sisters have shared. Thank you for the questions you have stirred up. Thank you for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we yield ourselves to you, each of us and all of us. Let your name be glorified in our lives, in our homes. Speak to us in the language we can understand. Be glorified, Lord, now and forevermore. I thank you for every sister who you have enabled to share. I thank you for every sister who you've been able to ask one question or the other. I bless you for their lives. We bless them in the name of Jesus Christ that they will do well. Thank you for all of us, all of us. Lord, please continue to help us, cause us to do well. So that when we give an account to you, it will be an account to which you can say, well done, well done, well done. Thank you, dear Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Dear sisters, God bless you richly. What a time God has given us. So we will, um, I would hand over to whoever is leading us in the, in the next session. Uh, this is to say that by God's grace, we will continue to learn. We haven't finished learning. There's so much God wants us to learn. Continue learning. And by all means, please make a date with us um, next week and every other Tuesday by God's grace, from 8.30 p.m. Ghana time. And with the recordings, if, if, if that is more suitable, and let us see what the Lord would want to speak to us. As many as can stay behind for prayer, we're going to pray in the language of the Spirit. Um, I invite you to stay and pray for whatever num amount of time you can pray for. Maybe you can pray for 30 minutes, maybe 10 minutes, maybe two hours, whatever. Just feel free. For those who may need to go leave and attend to other things. 
go with God, stay connected to the Lord, stay with your heart embedded in the word of God that he's spoken to you. God richly bless you. Please, is Sister Nuna not here yet? Oh, she's not the one for this evening. Um, yes, but yeah. she's the one. She's okay. the one. I think she, said she will join us a bit late. Okay. Yeah. Please, uh, please that we will start for her. Oh, God bless you. Yes, please. That will be a blessing. I'm stopping the recording. <laughs>